As our first warm-up exercise, we'll build this wooden table. And in Fusion, I will show you the proper way how we pre-plan and then structure actually our workflow. Because we work with wood and different parts uh, to create a furniture piece, you also have basically sh should always think about how will the piece later be manufactured? Where are the different parts? And how will all pieces be joined together? And in the same way, we actually build kind of like those building blocks. So let's say, for example, we make a table that is 31 inches wide, or no, deep, and 63 inches wide. Upper right corner here, for example, if you click on it and you move around, you can also click on those uh, corners or faces. You see we can zoom around and maybe for the moment click here on, on front or actually here going to a three-quarter view. And then you see there is a grid. And the grid is actually the ground plane where the red line is. Our tabletop is actually at the height of 29 inches up. So we have to somehow be able to create the geometry up there and in parametric design programs like Fusion, uh, others for example are Inventor, Pro-E, SolidWorks, we have to create a sketch at that height so we can use the sketch and extrude it into a three-dimensional object. But for a sketch we need a construction plane. So our first task will actually be, I will have in my case to switch this actually to inches since all my measurements are in inches. Okay. And then I will create an uh, offset plane. So I can click on this one and you see I see nothing because inside my browser on the left side origin is actually turned off because the light bulb is off and if I click on it then I see my X and Y, my Z and X and my Z and Y plane. And I want to click on this one and I can drag this one up and you see there is a distance and I know my plane should be 29 inches there. Okay, good. And for example, I could call this construction plane. You see now it's inside this folder construction. Let's call this one tabletop. Yeah, I don't have to call it C plane because it is inside the construction. So everything inside this folder will be construction planes. Perfect. Okay. This one I can turn off for the moment. And now on this construction plane, I can actually insert a sketch. And you have here the tool for create sketch. Or when we actually click on the line, it does the same. So it actually creates a sketch. So I click on, for example, line. And then actually, you see when you move your mouse around, Fusion asks you on what plane, what orientation do you want to do the sketch because sketches are always two dimensional. And I move my mouse to there and then click. And now I could click the top view, maybe rotate it. Okay. And now you see here the numbers, so 25 inches, 5 inches, and we said our line should be 31 inches uh, deep and then 63 inches wide. So just somewhere I click and click and click and I snap to the grid and you see actually when I go to this point and then move down, clicks there and last one and then you you see actually this will be f uh, filled. Okay, if you see 
those icons here. Just delete them from the moment so you can click on them and then press delete and then remove them. So what do we have? We have a rectangle now. Uh, what can we do with the rectangle? We can move this one left and right. We can move this one up and down. We can select everything by dragging over it and move it around. We can also click on a point and drag this point. So you see it's a little bit dynamic. So we have, for example, always 90 degree corners. And for example, these lines should always be vertical to on our screen. So along the Y axis, this line, this line should always be horizontal along the X axis. So what we have to do first now is after we drew just a general shape, it's called we have to dimension and we have to constrain it. So what does constrain, for example, mean? You see here there is something called horizontal and vertical. And if I click on this one and say you should be horizontal and you should be horizontal. And then with these two, because of the angle, it can try to figure out if it should be vertical or horizontal. Okay, and then I can press escape. And then I, I stopped uh, applying constraints. So what did I do now? If I, for example, click this point and move this point, you see it doesn't distort anymore because this function always keeps these lines either vertical or horizontal. So even here I can pull it. So if, for example, I delete this one, I think I can pull this line down. But you see if I move my mouse to the left, this line always remains vertical because I still have this constraint on it. You could also just have one horizontal line and for example you could say perpendicular. So this edge be perpendicular to this edge, this edge to this edge. So what happens? Can I move this point? Yes, I can move this point, but then this line always remains looking vertical because we make it perpendicular to this horizontal line. And we can also say U to U perpendicular. And here we don't have to do it anymore. And the software doesn't even allow it to you because this line is perpendicular to this and this line is perpendicular to this. So these lines are actually already restricted. So that's one way how you could do it or we could also do it this way, for example. Different ways, same result. Okay, so how do I know the distance? Well, if we go to sketch, you see there's also something called sketch dimension. And with that actually now we define, for example, the length of this line and the length of this line. So this, for example, if you double click it, should be 63 inches. And this one should be 31 inches. And we can zoom out a little bit. And there. Okay. Press escape. And you see every time when I'm inside a command and I press escape, it stops it. Do I have to add dimensions to here now? I do not have to. And also I can't because actually this line and this line are the same. They are, for example, uh, both horizontal and they also have the same width or length. So I only need to dimension one in this case because it is actually a rectangle shape with 90 degree corners. And the same is for the vertical line. However, I would like to perfectly center the sketch on my, my drawing. So how could I do this? So the width of my object here is 63 inches. So I could actually say, take this edge and make a distance dimension to the center point of my drawing and then say the be the half of 63. So for example, I click on this uh, actually first I click so I have nothing selected, click on the background, 
click on dimension, highlight this edge and click, and then I move my mouse to the midpoint there and then click, move my mouse up, and there is this value. So now I can double click this text and for example type in 63 inches divided by 2. Enter. Perfect. Now I could do the same with this edge down to this point and there. And this is now 31 inches divided by 2. So it's a little bit formula based. Okay. Works perfect. The only problem is, well, what happens if I, for example, say, ah, this should be 64. Then ah, this doesn't work anymore. So if, if I move my mouse to there, and you see actually it says D3 equal 64. And here, this is actually D2, 31. So I could also say here, instead of writing in the number, I could say D2 equal uh, divided by 2. So I use dimension 2 and its value and divided by 2. You won't see much. Uh, and this was D3. So double click D3 divided by 2. Zip there. And now if I change this, for example, to 60, uh, sorry, there. And you see this will result into 30. It's actually pretty easy. So instead of just when you have to do a change in dimensions, redoing everything, we kind of set up restrictions of formulas. And specifically because we will work with furniture, the objects are very simple. So it's very easy to predict how you have to establish those different dimensions so that, for example, you can quickly change designs very comfortably. Okay, so let's click Stop Sketch and let's rotate the view and take a look at what we have. Well, what we have right now only is actually a sketch. This one maybe now we should also call Tabletop. But it's just a drawing. We don't have a three-dimensional object. It is at the height of 29 inches and I would like to extrude it up now with an inch so to give it material thickness. So I could go to model, create, extrude, click on this face and for example type in one inch and press enter and now you see I have a new body there and this for example is my tabletop okay so now we have a tabletop but it's floating in space and we need to have some legs below so what I could do now is first I hide actually this tabletop then I click on line and I will click actually on the ground plane, so not on the tabletop construction plane there. And let's say I would like to have a lag post that looks like two inch by two inch. So somewhere I type in two inch by two inch there. Just I use the grid then I can zoom in. Then I can, for example, add dimensions to it. And I would like to know the distance maybe from this midpoint. So, for example, this edge to this point, and then this edge to the midpoint. Okay, perfect. However, right now I do not know maybe where is this post actually under my tabletop. So, now I could, for example, show the tabletop sketch and I see it as an overlay. So this, for example, is 63 inches. So let's say for, for this distance here, I would like to have, 
uh, let's say, what happens when we type in 30. So you see now it's actually overshooting a little bit. So maybe, um, maybe we could do it with 25. There you see that. And for example, let's go to a little bit up. So maybe how does it look when we say this should be eight inches or 10 inches? Yeah, so, okay, well, we can click stop sketch and for example, go to create extrude, click on this object and then type in 29 inches. And if actually my tabletop is visible, you will see now here in this extrude command, it says join. It will actually fuse the lag to the tabletop. That's not really what I want. So I want to click new body. Okay. So there we have the lag. Okay. But maybe, mm, I only have one leg, I need four. So let's go back actually to our sketch for the legs. So I rename this one and then I double click it. Or you could also write mouse button and then say edit sketch. Go into your top view. And uh, for the moment I turn bodies off so I don't see it and I would like to mirror this actually over. So how could I do this? So what I will do actually somewhere at the center here, I just draw myself a line along this Y axis and I draw a line along this X axis. And then I select these two lines. So shift and left mouse button and then click on normal. And you see that actually when you click on this normal construction, it turns a normal line into this uh, dotted dashed line. So this is for pure construction. We cannot really build anything with it. But what is this one actually useful for? Uh, I will show you. Actually, this point I will put down to there and this point I will put down to there. We can, you can use actually these lines as uh, a mirror axis. So while I'm still inside sketch, I can turn on the mirror command there. For example, select this, 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 and this, and then say, please mirror this over along this line and click OK. Zoom out when you see, there it is. Let's do this one more time. So you, 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 and those four bodies here mirror along now this other line. Okay. And stop sketch. Show my bodies. Okay, now I have those other lines, but I don't have another leg. Okay, so this is maybe the first moment where I could show you the the power of this program with parametric modeling in contrast to the way how just AutoCAD alone works. This is actually our extrusion for the lag in the timeline. And what you see in the timeline is we created a plane, a sketch, an extrusion, then we made a sketch and an extrusion. We can even with this marker click and drag it, the left mouse button or go forward. But we can also edit actually these steps, these features. So I move my mouse to this extrude two and then right mouse button and say edit feature. And you see here profile one is selected. Now if I click X and for example, click this one and uh, I think control click on a PC, on a Mac is actually uh, the Apple key and 
there it is and I'm on a Mac right now so maybe even control is wrong uh, try to see which one it is it is either control or alt one of those uh, okay what is maybe a different way I think we can drag over it as well and you see it works the same way and so what does this mean you see we actually have four elements out of the sketch selected and we all extrude them at the same time by 29 inches okay and you see inside the timeline i only have one command but my end result here in bodies you see i have four bodies so that's actually pretty good Okay, that's not too bad. So let's actually go back to the, the sketch here. So for my legs, go edit, and I also show my tabletop because currently I was offsetting, for example, the size of the, or the position of the lag cross section based on the distance from my world center. And maybe that's not really the best way to do it. So what I will do instead is actually offset the position of my lag profile from the outer edge actually of my tabletop. So for example, I could say just two inches between the edge of my table and the edge of a leg. So what we do is actually zoom in a little bit more and then click dimension, click on this edge and click on this edge and there. And then click this edge and then this edge. And you see actually it, it snaps actually to that edge of my tabletop drawing. So you have, this needs to be visible. And then for example, we can type in three inches and three inches uh, let's zoom out a little bit and you see all these other points will be updated at the same time so this is actually pretty awesome and click stop sketch and there we are so let's take a look at what we have you will see now inside the lag sketch you have these two new edges so what happened uh, because I snapped the dimension to the edge of my table fusion actually projected this edge and this edge down into this sketch so what does that actually mean I could, for example, now go to the tabletop, right mouse button and say show dimension. Then you see outside the sketch, I see the dimensions and actually I can refine these dimensions. And let's make this one 50 on purpose. And you see, wow, even the lag's updated. And what happened is simply we set up a set of rules for the software to follow. So this outer sketch is 63 by 31, perfectly centered to the world. And then these edges are projected always into the sketch for my uh, lag uh, drawing. And then we drew this two inch by two inch rectangle and dimension it always with a 3.5 inch distance to those magenta edges and when obviously now i change this value here the way how it projects down will be updated and thus the position of my table legs will be updated and that's for example also called that you're driving your design via dimensions because here i'm not scaling the tabletop and then scaling the legs by by hand manually i simply drive my design by formulas or interactive dimensions and i can actually also for here show right mouse button the dimensions so even in 
in object mode, so when I'm not in edit mode for the sketch. Even here now I could, for example, change the value and you see everything will be updated. Pretty awesome. Works really, really well. Okay, so this is basically kind of like the first quick introduction into how the sketch module works, how maybe we can create a construction plane, how to draw a rectangle, how to add uh, some linear dimensions, and then, for example, make our first object by using the extrude command. If we go back to the tabletop, uh, sorry, to the table image, we can see that there are also small wooden planks actually in between those legs. So how could we do this? So for example, um, let's say those are one inch thick and three inches deep wooden planks and you see they are flush to the outer edge of my table legs. So how could I build this? So the construction plane for my tabletop is at 29 inch and the those wooden boards go three inches down so I could if I want to create a new construction plane 29 inches minus three so 26 inches mm, oh way too much work because if it's at 26 inches below and it grows three inches up it will basically meet this tabletop so I actually simply could make a drawing for those boards inside for example the or on the tabletop plane and then simply extrude it down so i will actually hide for the moment those objects here and hide actually also tabletop sketch show my tabletop construction plane make a new sketch, click on that small yellow plane, go into top view, and now I would like to draw actually something that touches on this edge and goes to this edge. And you see there's nothing to snap. So I can't actually start with a drawing yet. I have to do something different. So I will actually click on sketch and then project there, project. And I will only click on this edge and this edge, this and this this and this. Oh wait, not this point. Hold on. By accident I actually clicked on that point. That's not what I want. I want the complete edge there and there and there. Okay. And then I can hide the lag sketch. This for example, let's say side okay so those four edges uh, eight edges I projected into my um, drawing for the board sides are kind of like seen from the top view as you can see and they will help me greatly to really understand where and how I have to put down my um, my wooden boards so when I go ahead and click on line and for example click on this point and you see now actually now I can snap to them and there I have actually now for example these lines created from the end point to the end point and we said there should be a one inch distance so what I will do now is I will maybe click somewhere so you it looks just like this, not like uh, with the triangle. So somewhere there and maybe somewhere there. OK, 
okay then i click on the horizontal constraint click on this one then i click on dimension this line and this line there and we say the distance between these two lines is one inch perfect okay i could also for example click offset click this line but you see actually it chains everything that's not what i want so deselect loop select and now you see i can only click this line and then for example i maybe can drag it out or simply type one inch enter perfect and dimension it one inch okay let's take a look at these two interesting diagonal lines they actually as you can see that's a constraint to be parallel so this line is always parallel to this line that actually could also mean that maybe if this line slightly rotated, this line will be rotated equally. So actually, while this is not bad, actually, uh, doesn't it's not even necessary because actually this line cannot be moved because it is snapped to this point. So these dimensions more or less I can actually remove. So let's see if I can move this point. No, I cannot because everything is controlled actually by this dimension. I just drew this line. Perfect. Okay, so also here actually I will create myself a midline there. Okay, and one more time there and then escape click and shift click click on normal construction and then you and you mirror along this line okay and then you and you mirror along this line and you see there are the two lines and there are the magenta lines left and right and because they all um, the ends touch each other here and here the end sits on the line the software can actually find the included surface area that's very important for us okay stop sketch this is perfect and now we could go to create extrude and then click on this one this one this one and this one move it down new body minus three inches okay and let's take a look at the rest what we have you can rotate around okay see uh, that doesn't look too bad to finish this design a little bit currently this is extremely sharp edged we actually want to soften this a little bit so in my timeline i simply go to where i only see the tabletop then i can go to modify and fill it and for example i can select everything here and then maybe type in 0.1 inch let's zoom in a little bit and you see it it rounds these edges just a notch click OK then I go to where I have my legs hide the tabletop then I do the same fill it go over 0.1 inch works good I will actually do the same also with those planks so actually I show the planks there select all these bodies all at once and say please round or break all edges there and drag over them and you will see it selects all edges point one and enter and you see inside my timeline i have one feature for the edge rounding and if i click it it highlights all these edges 
and I work on multiple objects at the same time. So this is actually pretty nice. And I will go back to my tabletop for a moment. Let's take a look. Let's go to there. So this is my fillet, right click, edit feature. And let's take a look what we have. So selections, and you see there's a selection. And I say remove this one. Because what I would like to do now is I shift left mouse button click only on those vertical side edges and say uh, round it maybe with one inch. I break these corners a tick more. Okay, and then I click on plus and you see, hmm, ah, it doesn't work that way. So minus, okay, good. And then I go to fill it. So one more time. And now you see when I click on this edge, it actually is select everything around because these uh, filleted corners create arcs that are tangent to the side. So I can click this one and click this one and then type in point one and enter. And let's take a look what we have. So you see now we first filleted those vertical corners with a bigger radius. And then later the resulting sharp corners and edges, we fill it one more time. And then let's go to the end of our timeline, move to end, click, and there we are. You see now this actually included or including uh, those edges. The design looks much more realistic because we put in that finishing detail of edge treatments. So let's say at one point you would like to create also a crossbar maybe here in between. So let's do that maybe. So this is actually where this timeline comes in. Uh, very, very helpful. So this is actually, you see my my command to fill it all my uh, legs and those uh, support materials. So I left mouse button, click, drag this marker in front of the fillet. I turn tabletop off for the moment. And now I will create a construction plane offset, turn on origin from the ground, move it up. Now, let's say maybe, maybe 15 inches. Okay, good. And let's say this is sidebars. Okay. And then this one I can turn off. Okay. Then let's make a sketch. Stop. Uh, okay, so this one actually I want to delete. There. Click on this one. Okay, good. So how do I know, how can I perfectly position actually this crossbar here in between? Um, so what I will do is I will hide my bodies. I will show my legs. Okay, yeah. And then I say project just this edge and this edge. And you see here, there, they popped up. Then I can hide this again. And now I can actually draw something in between, let's say there to there, and maybe there to there, okay. And it created some constraints. I'm going to remove all those. Uh, this one I keep perpendicular, this one to this one. So now these lines are all perpendicular to the magenta lines. And I can actually slide them around a little bit. So what is actually the width? This will be 
two inches. So let's say I would like to have a one inch distance between those two lines. So again, same material. And now I have left and right one inch left. So let's say this piece should be perfectly centered. The object is one inch thick. My legs are two inches thick. So half an inch left and right. If I set uh, my distance from this line to this point to, for example, 0.5 inches, I have the block perfectly centered. I do not need additionally to specify, and I can't actually this distance because it is actually the same. Okay, stop. Oh wait, no, not stop, actually. No, actually in this case we do it maybe this way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to show you, we can also do, for example, uh, the mirror as an object. So let's show everything. Let's go to create, extrude this one, and maybe three inches up not join, just a new body, click OK, and there it is. So, but now how do we get it over to the other side? Very easy. Also for objects, there is a mirror command. So I click mirror, uh, click my, my body, then click this one, and then the mirror plane, that's this plane click OK and there it got mirrored over. So now you see actually here inside the timeline I have my sketch, I have my extrusion command and then I mirrored this one over. So that's the reason why actually I like doing this inside, uh, do the mirroring inside the sketch because I have less features than inside my timeline here. Um, the outcome actually will be exactly the same. Besides also here now I have this mirror folder with these two objects in it. And mm, I don't really like it that much. It's for me that's it's, it's creating too much visual information to sort and to understand. So I actually will go back into the sketch edit and then also inside the sketch. In this case here I only need one line Okay, this line should be perpendicular. There, okay. And escape, click the line, make it a construction, and then click the mirror command, U and U, along this line. And actually for objects, you see I have uh, not my sidelines. I have also to mirror this line and this line. See so, you now there are these two lines. The moment I click OK, it's filled. Stop sketch. And for example, let's say. Uh, sidebars, then now oh, I have to adjust this extrude command. So edit feature, Apple or yeah, alt click. Okay, uh, let's double check if it was actually new object. It is new body, perfect. Then let's go to here. I turn this tabletop off and you see actually everything is filleted besides those two new wooden parts. So I could go edit feature and go for example to selection, press Apple key and you see all these edges are highlighted and then I drag over it. and go this way. And you see everything got deselected. 
So again, Apple key, drag over and you see it deselects everything. So this is empty now and then I can simply drag over it. And there it is, 0.1, click OK, perfect. There is obviously no information put in for wood joinery or something. Um, that, for example, would be something I would do afterwards. Uh, in this case, I simply only blocked out maybe the visual shape. Um, the technicality of wood joinery or fastener systems, that is something you always do afterwards. Obviously, you come up with an idea with possible functional requirements uh, thought ahead. So obviously I need to have thick enough material to screw this one or uh, attach to. But only after I have, let's say my, my visual design figured out, then actually I would take the time and put all those details in. And yeah, so this is basically everything about how to make a very simple table in Fusion. Now to save a file, you could go to File, Save. I saved it already, so I will go Save As, and you will get this dialog. And for example, here um, I'm inside my project Wayne Interior Design. You could create a new project. You could type in the name. And then for example, simply click save and then it will save it. So let's close it. Let's open the data panel on the left, go to Wayne interior design. And there, for example, you see the wood table. And if you double click this one, then actually, as you can see, it will open the file.